So the next test we're going to demonstrate today is the microalbumin uh, test. Um, it is a very important test for following diabetics because if you start detecting this microalbumin in their urine, that means that there's more uh, kidney damage going on in that patient population. So it's a pretty straightforward test very much like the normal dipstick. There's a, um, a pad on the stick that um, tells the analyzer that it's microalbumin and not the typical chemistry dipstick. So you still need to go ahead and tell the computer what you're going to do, what test you're going to do. I just need to wet. Yeah, just a drop on the end there. So you just put it on. And it'll take it in. If you were doing it manually, it would take... Actually, I don't think you can read it manually. So it's still a test that looks like it takes about 30 some seconds. So she's doing a level 1 QC, then a level 2 QC, and then we'll do our patient. Printing the data, and it knew that it was microalbumin 2. Tells us the date, time. We did the test, the number of tests, and it gave us an albumin, a creatinine, and an albumin creatinine ratio, and it interpreted it for us as normal. The analyzer also pr printed it on the screen. For some reason, maybe your paper was jammed or you ran out of paper. You, there is um, a way the analyzer, uh, you can re uh, reprint the results. So we're just going to do microalbumin again with a fresh strip and level two. She told the analyzer that she's doing level two. She hit start, which starts the timing because it's a color change. Very important that you know what's happening chemically on each of the chemical reaction pads, be it for the dipstick or the microalbumin. And then it's asking for the, the, uh, the color, which is other, and the clarity, which is other since we're dealing with quality control. And in the real world, while it's doing its thing, we would be doing something else. Maybe you are doing your paperwork for your QC. Again, if you don't document, it's not done. So once you have the, the pattern of how the analyzer works. Try to do things the same way each time. Um, that way, if you won't make a mistake. But sometimes the telephone rings or someone comes in or a stat comes, you get a cerebral spinal fluid or something that needs your immediate attention and so you can just walk away and let the analyzer finish what you're doing. So the, this abnormal control, the albumin was 150 milligrams per deciliter, the creatinine was 200 milligrams per deciliter, and the ratio of albumin to creatinine was abnormal. 
And I think it will depend on your standard operating procedure and your facility on what um, what what uh, information is actually reported out. Because often our analyzers give us more information than we actually report to the healthcare providers. So now we're doing our patient. Start, dip, blot, put it on that tray. Just a second to spare. Analyzer brings it in. Now it's asking for color. So what have you chosen? Yellow. Yellow. And keep going if it's slightly cloudy. Slightly cloudy. And so that's already information that get, will get printed out on the analyzer and print out. And the analyzer does um, store um, different patients and different information. And so we can also, if this patient is in our facility um, over a number of days, we can be bringing up the um, patient information and it will keep track of um, how they may be doing. And that's true of any, any analyzer. And so this patient, name and ID, color and clarity, and this patient has albumin of 150, creatinine of 100, and it's um, an AC uh, ratio of greater than 300, and it reported it as high abnormal. What so, was the one parameter that was off on her? Oh, and, and so on the normal dipstick on that for this patient, the protein was high and the microalbumin was abnormal. So this patient has some sort of renal issue going on. Good correlation. Yeah. So it's very, very important to take a look at your very, all the information that your testing is giving you. And as a student, um, understanding the manufacturer insert for how the reaction is working, what interference is, um, and what the meaning is of your tests. I think it's kind of cool when you can put it all together. Yeah. Nice.